Afternoon folks, only me again, Sean from Happy Days Veg. Uh, right, what, let me figure out what day it is. I think it's Wednesday the 29th of December. I hope you all had a good uh, Christmas. I hope you all had a good uh, few days off work. I hope you had some nice food. Maybe the odd shandy. I know I did, I'm, I'm feeling completely stuffed. So, also I'm not gonna lie, I stayed in bed most of the morning today. So, today's video. As you can see, I've got this IBC container here. And also, uh, one of these blue heavy duty pallets. Now, <clears throat> when I first moved into this house, uh, in three months, it'll be three years since I've lived here. I started some... I got some of these blue pallets and I built a three bay composting pallet, yeah? And I've put all sorts in there. Load of kitchen food waste, uh, obviously no meat, no bones, nothing like that, but all the food waste. Uh, and uh, bits of old compost, old weeds out of the garden, old vegetable plants, all the rest of it. So I've got three bays. It's not four by any means because it's, 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 it's broken down. It's never been turned, it's just sat there. Uh, so I've got a problem with uh, rats and mice and uh, water voles, believe it or not, from the from the stream. There's all sorts of creepy crawlies and little furry critters living in my compost deep. But that's not the main problem. The main problem is it's just open to the elements, yeah, uh, and it's just saturated. So the plan is in the in the next month or so is to dig it all out, replace the, the three bay composting system with IBC containers. Now, the secret to composting, apart from what material you put in there, uh, is all to do with airflow as well. You need air in your compost, right? So. Here's the plan. Oh, also, sorry, before I go too far, you can. The reason I'm standing there is because you can see I've got my chicken coop behind me. I clean the actual chicken coop out where the birds, where the chickens, below where the chickens roost. I've got all those containers you've seen in the other videos, and that's where they all poop. Yeah, so I clean them trays out about every five days. Yeah, beautiful. There's no smell good stuff and we all know chicken manure is good for the garden but it needs to be composted yeah and that I think they'll say about 12 months well we'll find out so and then once a month I clean the floor space in the coop out which has got no poo in it or nothing it's just it's just perfectly clean in, in all fairness it doesn't need clean out but I take it all out once a month and clean it all out and give it a good clean so it generates, you can't see me, but behind where you're standing, behind, um, behind your left, there's several big bags of uh, bedding, which is uh, some of it's uh, rapeseed straw, some of it's hemp, and um, what's the other one, Sean? I can't think what the other one is. Mixed in with a bit of chicken poke. Anyway, so I've got three or four big bags there, and it dawned on me that, you know, keeping these chickens... One of the problems with keeping chickens is you have to clean them out. And it generates a lot of uh, waste bedding. Now this particular bedding, it's very, very good for breaking down quickly, apparently. Breaking down quickly and it's better compostable than normal straw that you put in your rabbit hutch. Yeah. And we all know chicken poo's good for the compost and garden anyhow. So the plan is this. I want to put this chicken bedding waste and poo in these containers for two reasons the main reason is because it'll be more controllable but I'll explain how I'm going to do that in a minute and also if I just put that on an open compost heap it'll attract every fox within 100 miles of Carnarvon Castle yeah so and the last thing you want running around is your fo is foxes when you've got chickens so here's the plan I've got this uh 
IBC container, but unfortunately it's on a it's on a broken dodgy pallet, yeah? Now, where I've just got this from, down by my polytunnel, this was standing on top of another one. So the, the actual broken pallet wasn't a problem, but now I've decided to, to reuse this one, it needs a new pallet. So the first job is to swap the pallet, right? Actually, when I say the first job, you know the rules. The first job, what are the rules? You know the rules, repeat after me. No tea, no work. Bit too hot. So, this is what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to replace the pallet with this one. Now this one is a good pallet, it's got that bit missing, but that will make no difference, yeah? I don't have to worry about getting to the tap because I'm not gonna be draining any fluid off this. I don't wanna be draining any, what your class as compost tea off this. I don't wanna do that. I've got an abundance, I've got one of these full of pure horse manure, pure horse poo, yeah? That the rain's gone into it and it's just filled up, yeah? Admittedly, it's got, it's got weeds growing on the top now, but that is enough horse manure tea in there that when I drain it off to last me for the next, next five years. I've still got 80 litres of nettle tea, and then this year, now my comfrey patch is, my first comfrey patch is established, I'll be making 80 litres of comfrey tea, so I don't need to drain anything off here. So I'm not too concerned about being able to get to the tap. So, that's the first thing. So I need to change the pallet, change the pallet to this one, that way I can pick it up, put the forklifts, put the forklift uh, arms on the back of me little tractor and I'll be able to move this. But obviously, wherever I decide to put this, it's gonna be situated level off the floor on concrete blocks. And, uh, and once it's there, it's not gonna be moved. So, and then I'm going to cut probably the top half of the cage completely off. Remove these two and have the top half of the cage off, right? then that'll enable me to somewhere cut a big access door, yeah, on here. Uh, I'm gonna cut it on the corner, yeah? Uh, and then that way, give me a door where I can put all the compostable materials in, yeah? And then also, I'm going to be drilling loads of holes around the edges of this IBC container, yeah? I don't know how many, I don't know, but there's gonna be loads. And that's to let the air in, to aerate the compost. So, also, in an ideal world, I would have liked a, a bigger pipe, but it's just not cost effective for this purpose. I've got, I've got two or three lengths of this. This is normal guttering down pipe, yeah? So what I'm gonna do is, I'll be cutting a hole in the top there, yeah? Nice and tight, which will, which will allow me to slide a piece of this uh, pipe into the IBC container so it sits on the floor on the inside of the container. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be drilling about every three inches, yeah, a row of holes, four rows of holes, you know, 90 degrees to each other, across the entire length of that, and that will go in there, and it'll just stick out the top about six inches, just to give me something to hold on to for when I want to pull it out. Then what that will do is, that will allow air to get in and mix into the compost as it builds up, from the inside. So the holes on, in the IBC container will allow the air to blow, to, to, uh, to go in from the outside, and then the holes in here will allow the, uh, the air to go in and go into the compost on the inside. And I'm hoping to put four of those in, one roughly in each corner, yeah? Uh, so that's the plan, yeah? And then that way, I can position it wherever I want to position it and then I can start it off and in there I'll put, 
I'm going to start it off with a load of uh, spent compost and some uh, spent compost out my carrot beds and out my uh, self-watering system in the polytunnel. Just, you know, just three or four inches on the bottom just to settle it. And then I'm going to put in uh, a good layer of all of this uh, chicken bedding waste and poo. Yeah. And then I've got access to some horse manure, pure horse manure poo, no straw, no nothing. And then I'll put some of that in there. And then as it goes, I'll just keep on building up the layers. Uh, and I might build up some of these layers using some of the compost that I get out the three bays at the moment. Yeah, depending on how that looks. Uh, and then that way I'll have nice layer of the dry brown, dry, uh, hemp bedding with a bit of green with a bit of compost with a bit of horse poo job done also these pipes will allow a little bit of rain and moisture to get in yeah to keep it moist you don't want it drying out but you don't want it wringing wet yeah also if i do think it's getting too dry i can i can just put some water down there and it'll dribble out the bottom or I can just open up the hatch and I can just water it with a with a watering can yeah uh, and if I was gonna do that I'd probably use some of my horse tea uh, and nettle tea to, to, to dampen it down so that's the plan because somehow I've got to make somewhere secure uh, so that so that the, the rats and the mice and the voles and the foxes can't get in and the rabbits can't get into your compost heap yeah uh, but as i say it does need air for it to all work now there is a, a name for this type of composter i don't know bio something i don't know uh, some people would take the ibc container out and line this cage with uh like a weed membrane yeah a heavy duty weed membrane and then start filling it up yeah the only problem with that is it'll all be spewing and pressing against there. You know, it'll be falling out the bottom. You know, I don't want that. Now, if I think this is working, yeah, I'll do the same thing uh, several times. Because let's say it takes, I don't know. Let's say it took 12 months, one year. for this to be ready to be uh, emptied, which it won't, I'll tell you for why, because whatever you're putting on the top is fresh. So it's gotta be a year from the, it's gotta be a year from the last date of the last compost you put in there, compostable material you put in there. So let's uh, fill that up in a year, which is easily done, yeah? Then I'd have to leave it till the following year, if not longer. So here's the thought, yeah. I've got no qualms in filling this up and leaving it wherever I'm gonna put it, yeah. Uh, fill it up and I've got no problems with leaving it for another year after, yeah. Which means the stuff in the bottom will have been there two years, yeah. And you know, you get the drift, right? But it means you need several of these containers. Now, I've found somebody who sells these containers but they're on plastic plastic pallets so that's even better because they won't rot and uh they're selling them for 25 pounds each yeah so i've messaged her and uh hopefully she'll be delivering me for sometime in the new year because my uh, my van's off the road at the moment my van's in for repair uh so you know I'm going to have a constant supply of chicken waste, yeah, every week. That's got to go somewhere. Once the growing season starts, I'll be cutting my grass, so I'll have lots of grass clippings going in there. And, you know, job done. So if I, can, if I can cut a big hatch on the top, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but if I can cut a big access hatch on the top, give me somewhere maybe to get a big fork or a shovel in just to twist it round a bit, even better. So we'll see, so we'll see. 
But that's the, that's the plan for today. Well, the plan today is to change the pallet and to cut this cage, all these cages off, to cut this cage off the top there. And then that will give me a nice area to, uh, to decide how big and where I'm going to cut this access, access hatch. Yeah? Uh, what else do I know? Oh, also, if you are thinking of taking a cage off these uh, uh, IBC containers, you're going to need... I've already took this, this one off, yeah? Let me put my glasses on. I'll go, come closer and I'll show you. Right, where are you? That is off the corner of the IBC. And there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's at least... There's at least seven of them on this IBC container, yeah? The screw's about two inches long, and at first it looks like an Allen key, but you'll find it's a T25 star-shaped key with six points, star-shaped, yeah? That goes in there. So you'll, you'll need one of those, yeah? Uh, you don't necessarily need a cordless drill to take it off because that will fit... Uh, on the end of a little quarter socket or you can buy a screwdriver that'll fit onto there but you know make life easier and put it in your cordless drill so that is what i'm up to uh now you'll also know where's my tea you'll also know that i've built a twin uh rotating composter yeah which it's not set up, it's all built. The pallet's over there, the containers are in there. I'm just deciding where to put it. I wanted that closer to the house because I want to be able to put the kitchen scraps in there. So I need it closer to the house. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna set that up soon, this forthcoming week, and then I'll be able, I'll put it, I'll be putting some of the chicken bedding and poo waste in there and the kitchen waste in there, yeah, in uh, equal quantities. Or maybe slightly more than equal quantities because the chicken, uh, the the kitchen waste is always wet and got moisture in, you know, the the, the vegetables, the peelings, and all the rest of it. So uh, maybe one container of kitchen waste to two containers of dry uh, chicken bedding. Uh, so, but that's going to be here somewhere. I don't know where yet, but it's going to be here somewhere. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm up to. Right then, I'm back. I undid the fixings with a T25 star-shaped screwdriver in a cordless drill bit, as I showed you earlier. Yeah. Now there's two different types of fittings. There's a, a cup-shaped fitting on the corners, and then there's a P-shaped clip that wraps around the bar, and your screw goes through two pieces of metal that are on the sides. One on either side there, and two on the back, and four corner pieces. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine. That's nine screws. So then I've cut the uh, the cage off because I need to cut a door in. And I used my... Uh, uh, d -d 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 cordless angle grinder. Now this is a Stanley Fat Max one. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've done a, a review on this. Uh, anybody wants to know about this tool, if it's any good, give me a shout. It's perfect for jobs like this and perfect for jobs around the land. Don't get me wrong, if you're cutting the leg off an oil rig, it's no good. But for this kind of work, it's fantastic. And it cuts through there, easy peasy lemon squeezy. But kids, if you're using these kind of tools, if, you had, if you've had any of these kind of tools for Christmas, you need to wear your gloves and eye protection, yeah, at least. Them are the minimum, gloves and eye protection, yeah. So now, that didn't take long. So now, uh, I'm just gonna figure out how and where I'm gonna cut an access door into, uh, into, into this and see if I've got any hinges. Uh, 
because I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it hinged, uh, and I need some clips. Now you know I've got some clips left from my compass rotator, uh, rotating compass spin project. So who knows? So I'm going to have to have a little think about this. So I'm going to get the kettle on and have a think. See if I've got the materials, and if I've got the materials, the hinges and the brackets, uh, the hinges and the, the the clips, I might do it now. If not, I'll just think about it because you know once you've cut it, you can't uncut it. Uh, but I've decided it's going to be on the on, on the this front side here because there's a big dip in there, and rain will sit in there. So I think I'm going to cut a nice a nice. Uh, a nice uh, what you call this access hatch somewhere here yeah but I'm gonna get the kettle on and I'll get back to you on that one happy days <laughs> afternoon folks only me Sean from happy days veg uh, I'm sorry about the noise can you hear the rain lashing down onto the metal roof of my lean-to shed here uh, so I'll speak a bit louder, you'll have to forgive me because of the rain. It is Thursday the 30th of December I think, and yesterday I was doing a bit of a video, even though I haven't posted it yet, of my thoughts and process on making this uh, composting container. Now, uh, I don't even know where I got up to yesterday on the videos because I thought I was videoing and uh, my battery went dead and I didn't have no video, so, but I know the first part of explaining what I was going to do with this is, uh, is there, so just a quick update, <coughs> oh dear, excuse me, bit of just swath, you know the rules, <coughs> oh dear, no tea, no work, oh, let me put that down there on the, on the table there, because it's going to be in the way, so, I've got the bog standard IBC container. I've replaced the pallet because the old pallet was broken. I've cut down the cage. I've refixed the cage onto the pallet with the, the, the original fixings. Uh, I was wrong yesterday. I said there was no fixings on the cage. There isn't. There's eight. So, after a short, short uh, cup of tea and a short thing, uh, I decided to cut this type of door out. Yep. Yep. Nice big door to give you plenty of space to throw all your compost materials away. I would have liked to have made it bigger, but if I would have made it bigger, it all would have been a lot more wibbly wobbly. Yep. I've put these two pieces of plastic on both sides and there's a gap in there, just bigger, just wider than the thickness of the door. So when the door closes, it closes in there and the same there. And I've got that piece of timber there. So when the door closes, yeah, when the door closes, like, like so, yeah, that plastic is fixed. It can't be pushed in and it can't be pushed out. Yeah, job done. So. Let me put my glasses on. So the whole idea of this composter is to, as the compost builds up inside, is to allow air to get into the compost to help it break down. And I've seen some people on the internet and what they do is they build something like this with big tubes with holes in so the air can get down and some moisture can escape as well. So in an ideal world, I would have liked to have used, oh hang on, let me get a, let me show you this. In an ideal world, I would have liked to have used some of that four inch underground drainage pipe. But for this project, A, I haven't got any, B, it's very expensive and C, I just refuse to buy it when I've got some offcuts of, uh, actually, I have two off cuts from one piece is brand new. Uh, this is downpipe guttery, uh, standard downpipe guttery that I had left over from putting the guttery and downpipes on my chicken coop build. So what I've done is I mark the centre 
down the middle, and then I turned it round 90 degrees and marked it again. Turned it around 90 degrees and marked it again. Turned it round one last time and marked another line there, and spread the holes out every three inches, but I've staggered the holes, right? Now the easiest way to do that is to get your piece of plastic and to get one of these bad boys. Oh, look at that. Nice crayon, yeah? All you have to do is, I put that down flat on the workbench and then I just held, where's the camera? I just held it on there, held your fingers, so the slide on there and just mark the line, yeah? So there's your center line, perfect, yeah? And then you just mark where you want, on the opposite side, where you want it, yeah? And then when you see them two marks, put a little bit there and there and then put the central mark there Look around again and put it there, yeah, and do the same process, yeah. And then you can mark that way where you want to drill. And that's what I did. And I drilled all of these holes with this half inch step bit. These are brilliant bits, I suggest you get a set of these. Cheapest chips, yeah. Believe it or not, that's been drilled in there, yeah. So I've drilled them with this half inch step bit, yeah? Job done, so that's that. And you end up with the length of pipe with all the holes in. How many holes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, twenty-four, thirty-four, forty-four, forty-six holes I think are in there, yeah? And then you'll see that I've already got, let me just stand up there, you'll see that I've already got three of them in position, right? And I don't know what, I don't know, let me see what the camera can see there. Right, it's hard to see, but I've got three of those already in position. And basically, I've drilled a hole with a hole saw, yeah? I call them Starrett Cutters and we've discussed that before. Yeah, Starrett Cutters, Starrett is a brand yeah, this is a, a metal hole saw. And I've cut a hole in the top. Yep, yeah, and then I've got some offcuts of this old gravel board, six, six inches wide, an inch thick, roughly mark the center, drilled a hole through there, yeah, with that. Pre-drilled the corners. Pre-drilled the corners. So the idea is that that is screwed to the bottom of the IBC container, screwed through the plastic onto the wood, and then your tube can sit in there, yeah? And it'll be loose in the hole, but it won't be, it won't be uh, able to slide across. So when you're, when you're uh, throwing in all your compost materials and you're pushing it around with a shovel or a fork, they won't, they won't be sliding. So, but I'll, I'll do, take some photographs and I'll show you better photographs, yeah? So them there are perfect, right? And they're roughly, roughly equal distances. I haven't measured them, I just guessed them. Roughly equal distances. And they're sticking up, I don't know how much they're sticking up, this measurement is irrelevant. Sticking up at eight inches. So, further down the line, when this compost container's full, and I can't get any more in, I'll be able to untwist, I'll be able to untwist the pipe, yeah, and pull the pipe out, and then that will enable the air to, to have more, even more contact with the compostable materials in there, yeah? Then I'll leave it for 12 months, and, uh, and I'll see what happens. So, I've just got one more of these to put in, yep. So basically, all I do, I just put that through there, drop it down, roughly get a square, and then using a screwdriver bit with a long extension bar in my drill, it gives you extra reach. 
So just bear with me. I'm just going to drive this bad boy home. Beautiful. Beautiful. How easy is that? And then, just one other uh, little thought I had. Because this is out in the, in the elements, the rain will go down there, yep, yeah, and uh, it'll put too much moisture in to the bottom of the IBC container. I need them to be open for the wind and the rain, uh, for the wind and the air to get in. So what I've decided to do is just take a half inch drill bit, take that pipe out gently, and I'll drill a half inch hole straight through straight through the bottom, yeah? So any water now, look at that, that's beautiful. So any rainwater that goes down there has got, uh, it's gonna end up in that circle of timber which is screwed down with a hole and the water can trickle out and just trickle out to the bottom of the IBC container, yeah? Now, I have put a couple of drainage holes at the back, but I'm going to wait till I get this in position, in its final position, standing on concrete blocks off the ground, before I put any more drainage holes in, yeah? So, that is nearly done. Time for a sip of tea. See, so they're, they're able to twist and turn, which you can turn around, you know, just to slightly move the holes uh, to alter where the air is. And then as I say, you fill it up and you fill it up and it'll break down and it'll break down. And you can give it a bit of a turn with a fork or a shovel. And then when it gets too much and you can't put any more in, you leave that door closed, you take the top off, yeah, you take the top off and you put the, the remainder of the compost in there. Keep on going so you can't get any more in. And then, by that time, it'll be solidly compact. Yep. And then all you do, you twist these, take these out, and, uh, and then that enables more oxygen to get in. Uh, well, you just leave that for 12 months uh, to let it do its thing. I say 12 months. 12 months from the last... Uh, not from 12 months from starting it, but when you filled it, then you wait 12 months. Yeah. And what I'd probably do... What I'd probably do is I'd probably get some black polythene, put it over the top, yeah, uh, cut some holes over there so the air can still get in, yeah, and put black polythene loosely over it and just put a, just uh, gently put a, a, a strapping band around it so the air can still circulate, but that way black polythene will increase the temperature and it make it hotter when the sun shines on it. So there's a thought. So, that's a nice cup of tea, by the way, thanks for asking. So, the only thing left for me to do is to decide how many and where I'm gonna drill all the holes in the side. Yeah. How many, I don't know. No particular order. No particular order, but there's going to be several hundred holes in that container, yeah? I'm not going to drill no holes on the top, and I'm going to drill no holes in the lid, yeah? I'll tell you for why, because there's a gap round there where the air can get in, yeah? 
So that's that. As I said in my video yesterday, I'm not aiming to drain any liquid off this compost. I've got gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons of uh, uh, full strength horse manure tea that needs to be diluted. I've got enough for that to last me as good as forever. And I've got access to as much horse poo as I need. Uh, I've got 80 litres of nettle tea that I made this year. And I'll make another 80 litres next year probably. Uh, so I don't need this. And also, I planted my comfrey in the garden this year. That grew massively, but I didn't harvest any. I've let it grow for the first year. And then next year, when it grows, I'll get to the stage when I'll just cut it all down to the ground and then I'll make my comfrey tea. 